Good evening and welcome to another episode of the San Antonio Soccer Roundtable. Got a special episode this evening. I want to really get into our thoughts on San Antonio FC, but joined tonight by Rafa and Harry Jose, unable to make it. How are you doing tonight, Harry? Happy Memorial Day. Thank you. I'm doing well here. Uh, Had a great night last night. Oh, wait. No, yeah, last night, two nights ago. I forget. It's all running together, but... uh... Had a great time with the family. Uh, not so much great on Saturday night. It was a little uh, upsetting, <laughs> so, to say the least. Uh, but no, it's, it's 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 been a good night and uh, a good weekend here. Hopefully, you know you're able to spend some time with family, friends, and of course remember uh, uh, those that have uh, fallen for this country and. Um, you know, whether in the line of duty or, or unfortunately, like my father, uh, years later, that uh, um, ended up uh, getting a uh, medical condition because of it. So um, even though some veterans may come home, uh, you know, don't forget those that do come home but pass away, you know, earlier in life than should due to either injuries or causes uh, at that time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rafa, I know you finally uh, getting to make it home, man, from being on the road with uh, all your travels. Uh, how was the weekend? Were you able to watch the match uh, there on Saturday? Yeah, uh, finally got to go home after I haven't been back since January. My parents <laughs> were like, where did you need to come more? It's like, oh, I'm going to try. So but it was good to go be back, see some old friends, and then get the updates on Twitter for the game and just seeing the, the debacle. I was about to slam my phone. I was like... <laughs> what's, what's going on? It's like it, all my friends are. I go there. What's going on with your team? You're, well, you know it's bad when the people that are normally positive about the team either aren't saying anything or have crossed the line into in what I call hairy territory. Where hey, we're starting to criticize. So um, it was bad enough that you know I, I I copied Tim Holt on it as well as. SAFC because normally when I do my little rants I just you know hashtag SAFC or just SAFC and don't tag them at all but the, Saturday night it, uh, it you know it was it was code zero and like I said here you know you know apologize Mr. Holt but uh, you know voices need to be heard at this point but uh, tonight, like I said here, I'm probably going to try to run the show here a little bit, and that way Scott can do more of the producing in the background and uh, follow the chance uh, or that, that if there is any uh, questions that, that pop up um, on here. Uh, just kind of let you know future-wise here, uh, shows are probably going to be a little bit more pre-recorded um, when they go live on, on the system here. Um, some of that's just so we can add on a little bit more graphics. We can do a little bit more fine tuning on some of the conversations here. Um, and then it'll be uploaded to, you know, you know, if you do the podcast, you know, to, you know, to the usual SoundCloud initially, and then, you know, Google play and iTunes. Um, and then of course, uh, it'll be loaded onto the YouTube. Um, and I believe Scott's going to be implementing Facebook live, uh, either with this episode or coming up. So, um, we're trying to grow it, you know, while it may not be, you know, as live as it used to be, you know, if you want to, you can always hop on Periscope, but we're going to start, uh, uh, promoting it, uh, you know, more once the show's already recorded. So, uh, just some changes behind the scenes that, you know, I think, uh, for you guys, um, that do catch it, um, can do it here, but, uh, any questions that or any feedback you want to provide on that, Scott, because I know this is something that I think will help you out and, and help more on the producing side uh, for you. Yeah, no, I, I think you nailed it actually right there with everything that you encompassed. Uh, we're, we're getting big, Rafa, you know, so uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that really and truly, like you said, we get everything up there to a YouTuber for those that do listen on SoundCloud or iTunes, whichever that might be. That way you guys have access to it sooner and everything, and we can make sure that we're, we're doing everything that we can so that you guys can try and catch it. So. Might be a little bit bombarded with the show, but obviously we definitely still want y'all's input and uh, want to capture all, all y'all's questions and feedback as well. So uh, with that coming in true, we may also do, you know, uh, you know, and I know uh, uh, Kyle and Larry do a very good job with, with their show on, on asking questions up front. So that might be something that we'll um, have as maybe, a, you know, a, a, a feedback or, you know, questionnaire for the show. 
um, you know, round table discussion, you know, questionnaire that we might send out to you a little bit here. But uh, to kind of get started here, we're going to go over, we're going to start with the ladies, um, you know, and like I said, I'm going to try to keep these pretty consistent so that way, um, you know, number one, it's easier for me. Uh, number two, um, you know, that way you, you, know, you kind of follow along, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, so starting out, um, this week's actually coming up June 1st is when uh, San, the San Antonio Athenians will kick off at the Cibolo uh, Multi Center at 7 o'clock. Uh, they'll be playing the Houston Aces, uh, who are the defending uh, champion, and I think have kind of an advantage uh, because they've already played El Paso Surf and FC Austin and already 2-0 and on the season. So um, this will be their third match. This will be the Athenians' first match. So... Uh, should be interesting, uh, you know, coming out to, as a home opener with a versa team that's already played a couple of games under the belt uh, for that there. Um, following up uh, will be the Alamo City uh, of the WPSL. And I apologize that we missed their first game, uh, Sunday, May 19th. Uh, they went on the road and beat uh, the Texas Titans 3-2. Uh, to two. Um, However, opening night, uh, you know, on May 26th, uh, the uh, – Lost uh, one to three to H or AHFC uh, Royals uh, for that here, so a tough way to open up at home. Um, I did happen to catch uh, a friendly between them and Samba. I believe it was Wednesday, right, Scott? Mm -hmm. um, you know where uh, uh, Samba got the one zero victory. Um, if you do get an opportunity, go out uh, the stadium. Uh, you know, obviously it's a UPSL, you know, WPSL stadium, so it's a little bit you know smaller. Um, but I really like to get the stands there from my understanding. They're going to have food trucks. They're going to have, they're going to serve alcohol, which I don't think a lot of the, uh, uh, UPSL, WPSL teams do at this point. Um, so, but, uh, it, it family, family thing there, uh, you can get season tickets for $45 or $10, uh, for individual game tickets. So, um, if you get the 45 one, it covers both the WPSL and, um, the UPSL, uh, ladies, uh, for there, so that's a, that's a really good bang, you know. If, if you're going to be going out, going out to the games there. And Harry, uh, I was curious. I, I know you kind of had a chance to find out a little bit more information, um, and mm -hmm. I, I know some people have been wondering as far as Alamo goes because they are going to have a team, as you mentioned, competing in both the WPSL and the UPSL. Have mm -hmm. you gotten any additional information as far as like, is it going to be an A team, B team? Are there going to be age differences? How are they going to distinguish between the girls on the WPSL team versus the girls? on the UPSL squad. So what I've heard is the the the, the UPSL uh, ladies will be more of the younger. Um, I happen to know uh, that they're gonna have a 13 year old on the UPSL team. Um, you know, speaking with uh, her parents actually, uh, you know, at the friendly there. And I was like, hey, any chance of her going up? And they're like, no. And, and I think it was more their side than, um, you know, just because, you know, at 13 compared to playing ladies that are 17, 18, 2021, 20, along those lines. So I do think, you know, you know, from my understanding between the uh, WPSL and UPSL team, um, I think there is that ability to move up uh, for that here. So I, I do believe it is an actual reserve team, um, but it's going to be younger. It's going to be more high schoolish, um, you know, kids are, you know, kind of right on that fringe there uh, for that, where I think the, uh, the, 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 the WPSL probably more college college age. Um, you'll have a few few a few high schoolers. I'm assuming sprinkled into there, but um, you know I think it's just as we thought here. It'll be the the better, more veteran players on the WPSL team. Um, we did get a point of contact, which we'll probably reach out to them to see if we can get more clarification. Maybe even invite uh, you know the coach on 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 the show uh, uh, for that here. Uh, just as a heads up, that's, you know, Alamo City is probably going to be the team that, that I'm going to be following and rooting for this year just because they're in the neighborhood. Um, you know, they're 10 minutes away uh, for that here. Sorry, John. You know, Samba's on the other side of town. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Rafa, <laughs> it's on you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I will make it out to, I will make it out to there. But it's, you know, it's just as a convenience thing. It's, you know, it, you know. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the time out at Alamo City. It just it was real, you know, real personal. And uh, to me, it's it's a setup very similar to what the runners have, with the exception, I think the runners are hand tied because it's on UTSA campus, sure. so they can't do what they want to do. So I think yeah, Alamo City is able to get those little amenities that you know I know Mason, you know, 
uh, probably wants to do just you know unfortunately is not in a position to do as of yet um, you know for that here um, so then the next up the blossoms they also start uh, on the road on uh, June 1st here um, last I checked I still haven't heard any word or any any news from the blossoms so yay for them uh, you know for that here please reach out to us or you know do something um, the Alamo City Women, however, uh, did kick off on May 25th uh, on the road um, against FC Coyotes, and they won 5-1. to one. So uh, they looked pretty good uh, at the start of the season there. And Sporty, uh, San Antonio, was it Sporty, right, Sporty. FC? Sporty, mm-hmm. uh, Them and Samba played to a 1-1 draw. Um, you, know, for, you, know, you know, some feedback I got from John was a pretty even game along those lines. But I think the biggest thing that uh, – came out of there wasn't really the game but the ticket prices uh they were asking 15 bucks to walk in which i'm okay paying 10 i'd prefer five you know for upsl you know wpsl you know type level 15 is more safc like um for their thoughts is is that something that could keep, you think that would keep fans away having to pay 15 bucks or for an amateur team i think so unless you're getting the whole experience right there in the front and being sitting next to the bench well you've been out to warrior stadium scott yeah i've been out there to warrior stadium kind of like rafa said though you know for an amateur team 15 dollars i think is asking a little bit much and honestly, I don't think it's asking too much to where fans won't pay it. It's a nice stadium, don't get me wrong. I don't know what the partnership that they have with Cornerstone is, you know, and, and how much it's costing them to use the facility. But I, I think where you're going to have a little bit of a disconnect is really the people that you're asking to pay it are the parents and friends of your players. You know, I mean, those are really your core group that's going to come out there regardless of ticket prices are going to be mom and dad and your closest friends and family. And so you're really kind of taking advantage, I feel like, of that loyalty a little bit, where, yeah, maybe instead of it being a $10 or $5 ticket, they're still going to fork over the 15 bucks to go out there and support, you know, or, or even people like you, Harry, where it's like, yeah, you'll, you'll probably still go out there once to catch a match and pay the $15, but it's really more taking advantage of the fact that people want to contribute and want to support the cause. Well, to me, and this is the reason why I wonder if it's if it's too much. And when I was looking at Alamo Cities, and I even asked asked Alamo City, I was all like, "Hey, for kids, is is there a break for kids? Because to take Anna and AJ would run me thirty dollars at you know at Alamo City. So you know, you know, unless I get the forty five dollars, which that's a whole separate <laughs> discussion if you're committing a full season." But if you're talking 15 bucks, you're talking about $45 just, just to walk in for three. You know, mm-hmm. you're talking 60 bucks if you're, you know, which if you're talking about an average family of four, that's a lot, you know, that's a lot for SAFC in my opinion. Um, this season alone, especially. You know, you know, let alone, and, and, not, and this is no disrespect to the teams and, and stuff like that. It's just, it's more to the level of the competition. Um, but to me, that, that, that that's kind of shocked by that now, and especially for San Antonio, where if we're honest, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do around here, um, you know, with you know movies, you know, you know stuff like that, you know, just going out and about. That to me, that's that's a, that's a lot to ask, and and like I said here, if, if I had my choice, you know, of going to see Sporty FC. I can tell you, I'm probably going to see them more at Alamo City and at an more, away game. You know, you know at, at the away games locally, just because I have the availability to do so, than than going going to the actual Warrior Stadium. So, yeah. but it's it'll be an interesting decision, and and you know, you know, like I said here, good for them if it works. You know, that probably means bad for us if it, if it works though. Because, you know, the other teams will be like, hey, if they can get away with 15, we can stretch it out. Um, on So as far as the standings uh, on that, uh, Samba, you know, has played two games there in first with four points, uh, followed closely by Alamo City uh, with three and, and uh, Sporting, uh, uh, San Antonio Sporty uh, with one. Uh, Coyotes FC is, uh, you know, bringing up the rear. Um, two games played and, and no points uh, on the season here, so. Uh, still real early for them. 
On the men's side here, uh, the Corinthians, uh, they beat Texas International 5-love, uh, or 5 oh, pardon me. 5 uh, No, sorry, this isn't tennis. It's like, wait a minute. It's not even like U.S. Open weekend. <laughs> Uh, so they're back up in the third spot. And I did get some clarification for playoffs. It's top three in each uh, division. And the number one with the best record gets a bye. So, you know, uh, uh, so, you know, so basically, because, you know, uh, so top three, uh, if you finish top three, you're, you're, you're in a playoff position uh, for that. So that puts uh, the Corinthians above uh, Athletic uh, athletic Katie uh, into the third. So they're in the in, in the playoff position and still games in hand uh, to try to move up that's going to put the heart though in a kind of an interesting predicament isn't it for the uh, if it's just the top three that advance yeah so which right now well coyotes is already at 18 points but they have 11 matches okay um backcountry which is you know maybe a point of topic that we'll have here um they're in fourth at 12 and uh, but they've only played five matches um samba fc's at seven matches at 12 points as well so um they've got games in hand to be able to do it so it'll be kind of interesting um to see what happens and even well you know fc thunder bernie's um, got six points in six matches so i think they're they're kind of getting that stretch where hey they, they've got to make a decision you know because there's only 14 matches so samba's halfway there well, and I think that's where it's going to get close is that third spot there. Because like you said, yeah. you've got FC Waco and Coyotes FC that are having some really strong seasons. So is that going to limit, you know, your San Antonio teams that is just one where it's San Antonio runners and Samba that are kind of battling for that last spot? Yeah. So it'll, you know, and the Coyotes, like I said here, they, uh, they've, they you know, they've, they, they got a much earned or much important victory this week here as we'll come up here. So. The runners uh, had a game, um, but it got rescheduled uh, due to uh, backcountry uh, FC, um, and that was the set. Well, well, we'll just go into get yeah, backcountry right now. So they were they forfeited on the twenty second against Samba. They played Round Rock on the twenty third and won four to one, and then they had the game rescheduled against the runners on the twenty fifth. Um, from my understanding, they're having some issues with rosters, um, and it seems like it's the way the way trips that that they're having having the issues. So, um, and I sent a, a message to uh, UPSL uh, Central, uh, you know, uh, commission. There is like it's not a good look. You know, to me, it, it it doesn't give a good reflection on you know FC Waco runners Samba. The UPSL, rock, that, the league as a whole. Yeah, but you know, on those teams that, you know, what Samba last last year outside of the last game, which everything was all decided, you know, to save you know, uh, Atletico Katy from making a trip over and stuff like that. That I can understand where there's really nothing to gain. At this point here on a league, you're mid season. This team came in late to start off with. Mm -hmm. And they're forfeiting games, do, you know, you know, do the rumors of, of possible players, you know, not being able to make the trip, um, you know, to me, it's not a good look. Now, um, they already have one team that folded, you know, or that, you know, is taking a hiatus, you know, FC Knights. Um, well, you had Mac FC so from last year, that whatever had happened Mac with FC, Mac. So I understand it's a growing pain. And, you know, at this level here, Division 5, Division 6, whatever you want to classify it but to me i, I you when 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 they when you looked at their schedule it was stacked you know the 14 games was stacked in a three to four week period mm -hmm. and you know to me that's a disservice not only to the players that, that they have there but to me the rest of the league so you know hopefully it's just a one-time thing but you know to me Let's say back back country, you know, forfeits a couple of more, but due to the talent that they have and are able to win at home, do you really want that team qualifying for third in the playoffs? Right. Well, and I'm technically, curious, they, you know, if 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 they hold true to form, most likely they're going to be the third team. I'm curious, Rafa, just kind of your perspective, working with kids now that are getting closer to that age. How hard is it sometimes for some of these? 
travel tournaments and things like that to field that that roster for you or how important is it to have kind of a group of guys that's committed yeah not i usually i'm this age 17 18 and 16 you know kids are focused on their personal life um they're maybe working you know they have a job they're probably providing for families and stuff mm -hmm. that's an issue i came up with when we went to the showcase you know, we only took about 13 out of the 20 possible players. And then this fast tournament we played, we only had two missing. You know, and it made a big difference. And, you know, I guess but depending on how the league runs as far as the time frame, you know, does it cut into with them playing their college, high school soccer, college or club mm -hmm. soccer, or, or so forth, you know, cramming a bunch of games, I think that might be that's, just, that's the issue. Maybe they shouldn't schedule as many games that just you know, play each other just once. You know, and... Well, I think they had a facility issue. And, and to be fair, they came on real late mm -hmm. uh, in the, you know, they were a late addition on onto the schedule, um, which it, it, it makes the conferences even, don't get me wrong. But it's, it's, it's one as far as, for for a credibility of the league and, and to me for a fairness of, of the league sure yeah you know it's it's you know you know you know and, 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 and no offense to samba but you know they got the three points um let's say the runners do have to play them and, and you know let's say they they you know they win or lose to me having it rescheduled and, and stuff to you know you know outside of the weather you know, if it's a weather or field issue, because a lot, you know, a lot of these teams don't control their own fields outside of your control. But to me, if it's, you know, and we saw it with, uh, um, with what uh, the uh, Corinthians in the first match of theirs, where they had to forfeit, you know, due to not getting uh, transportation player, you know, player issues, um, you know, in, in Houston. So to me, it's something that, you know. It's something that I would like them to be able to address if it's something that's possible. And, you know, if you've got family emergency stuff and, and supporting the family has to come first, you know, we all understand that. With but work in it. Th that, that's why you want to have that depth. And, you know, you know, in speaking with Mason and, and speaking with uh, John, that's why you had carry such a large roster. Sure. You know, be because, you know, hey, it's not like SAFC where you can count on, 18, 19 people that, that are going to be there consistently, you're really on this side here. You probably need, you know, minimum of 25, 30, um, you know, on the roster, at very, you know, in various, you know, various parts of the season. So. And that's a good point. You saw it out there at the Corinthians practices and stuff like that when we were out there. You know, a lot of these teams do carry large roster sizes, you know, for that reason. But it, it, like you said, Rafa, you know, that's a great point. Some of these kids probably are working at home and stuff like that, you know, for family and everything else. And, you know, priorities are priorities. But it is unfortunate. It's, it's not a fair result, like you said, Harry, for, you know, uh, one team to get the three points and another team to have to kind of battle for it. And hindsight's twenty twenty. but you had the Corinthians come on board that ended up going into the south that could have filled that last spot there almost in the heart perfectly and, and not had the San Antonio team split up. But... I'm sure it'll be something that they get corrected. Yeah, and there's an opening with the Knights going away, so that, that might that'll be something that we'll have, kind of have to have that discussion on what happens or who fills that 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 eight slot there. Um, as far as Samba, you know, they had the, tw the forfeit against uh, that country, um, and then they lost uh, two Coyotes FC two to one, and, and to me that was a kind of a big loss, um, especially where the top three make it. Um, if they could have got it, that would have drawn them even, even though uh, Coyotes have played four more games. So um, it, it's one that hurts, it does, you know, uh, for that here. Uh, the Thunder uh, lost 5-0 to FC Waco, and Samba, I apologize, plays uh, on the first against uh, uh, FC Waco at Wheatley Heights. So, uh, um, it, you know, at, if you have the opportunity, go out to there. I'm still early enough to be able to, uh, watch that and then come home and, and watch uh, SAFC um, at Sacramento. So uh, for that. And then the other uh, local team, uh, Bernie Thunder, uh, lost FC Waco and they play. And, and I couldn't see if they played uh, Round Rock. Uh, no score was updated. Uh, you know, checked the uh, social media and didn't see anything on it as well. So 
but that's the uh, that's the update. Uh, runners are in second at 22 points, three points behind FC Waco. Uh, Samba's in fifth at 12, or time for fourth with, uh, but technically in fifth with games played. Her goal difference out of negative four, and FC Thunder is in six. So, I think FC Thunder most likely finish around that six spot there. Um, just just based on so far from what we've seen here. Um, but that three, four, five between Coyotes, uh, Backcountry, and Samba, uh, they're really fighting for that, uh, that last playoff spot there. Uh, interesting to note, probably the number one seed is going to be FC Waco. So they'll get the bye uh, for that. So that'll be interesting to kind of see how that playoff structure uh, works out. So... Yeah, and Thunder Burning schedule not going to get any easier. Uh, got a game against Backcountry, and then they've got Runners, Samba, Coyotes, and Samba again. So not an easy finish to this season. But they're enemies. a young team, though. So, Well, I guess the other team that will be coming in next year uh, will be, uh, uh, will be uh, Alamo City as well. So it will be interesting to see where they start out at as well. So, so there could be two more San Antonio teams. Uh, depending on what happens uh, that would fill that up here. So um, I could, th- you know, I could see where, you you know, you could have almost a San, you could almost have like a Temple Waco uh, division, you know, r- you know, Round Rock, and then you could have kind of, a, you know, the South Southern. Austin, San Antonio, um, you know, division, you know, coming up with just as many, with as many teams as, as are in the area, so. Well, and with the second tier coming, too, it'll be interesting to see how they kind of want to divide all that stuff up there because you're going to need two teams, too, yeah. And you know, Matt mentioned uh, that there's some sort of announcement coming out, uh, I want to say this week. Uh, I think it'll probably be mid mid this week here. Uh, Unfortunately, he won't leak it to me, even, you know, with me saying, hey, I won't tell anybody or nobody listens to our show. Nobody uh, watches our show. (laughs) Yeah, you know, you know. You know, I keep telling him, you know, I'm talking uh, USL, not UPSL, but uh, he hasn't fell for that one. I'm, I'm like uh, somebody else. <laughs> so I guess we get to the topic that we've been wanting to not talk about all night. Uh, San Antonio. Well, that was a shit show. Yeah, well, before we get into that, the Academy did uh, some good news. Had a pretty awesome trip uh, out there to England to get to showcase or play against some of... What I guess they were playing against some of their... Was it more their D2 Academy teams, or were they playing against some D1 squads there, Rafa? No, they were D1. They were were D1. They were playing like... Stoke City, Wolves. Wolves, yeah. Which is a pretty awesome experience for like, you know, some of the, it was the U13s, right? Because the U15s made the trip no, down U12. there. U12s. Mm-hmm. So pretty awesome experience there for the academy team before we get into uh, what was there in Edinburgh on uh, Saturday night. Um, do you have the, you have the trip, the uh, results kind of, I know they, they didn't post all the scores. They try not to focus too much on the results, but. Uh, yeah, I got it here. So. Uh, oh, hold on one minute here. I was going to talk about this, but I forgot to save it. So I know they won the. Hold on. Let me go to this one here. This is why we record her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where did it go? All right. So, which is the one that has the stadium? They had one that had the picture. So in group play, San Antonio actually finished in last um, on their hair, but they had the Wolves. Um, and basically, it seemed like it was FC Dallas and SAFC uh, Academy teams were, you know, kind of brought over from America over because it's, you know, and all the uh, tweets from uh, tweets from, you know, the Global Footy Pro uh, on there. You know, it, it talks, you know, it seems like, you know, quite a bit was, you know, SAFC and NFC Dallas related. Um, but uh, in doing so here, they had a little playoffs here. The Shield, tr- the, the Shield Trophy, which is basically the bottom two of each group. Um, you know, you had uh, Wolves Academy and um, I want to say it was Derby County uh, was who they had in their in theirs. And there's, and then they had Stokes. I want to say it was uh, Sheffield United. 
uh, you know, was in there. So they finished last. I think they tied Sheffield United in league play. Um, but in the playoffs, uh, they, uh, the semifinals, they played uh, Birmingham City and beat them 4-1. Uh, and then Lister City beat Sheffield United 4-2. Uh, and then in the Shield final, uh, San Antonio beat Lister City 3-1 uh, to one, uh, to win the uh, Shield final trophy. Uh, you know, for that here cup, I guess is probably the more uh, appropriate term. Uh, but uh, what an experience for those guys. They got uh, to meet the England team, you know, the, uh, from my understanding, some of the, watch some of the, what the, the English uh, uh, team there, they got to see uh, Man United Stadium, um, as well as just all the experiences and sightseeing going around uh, England there in, in uh, St. George Park. But, uh, um, you know, what, what, what an awesome experience to be, you know, you know, to be able to say, hey, you participated in a international cup at you know twelve around twelve years old. Well, and Rafa, you and I were just talking, you know, about the new Wave Academy that's coming to San Antonio and and how legit and everything that's going to be, and how important it's going to be for San Antonio FC's academy program to really start to step it up in order to continue to establish itself as the premier development academy, so to speak, here in San Antonio. What do you think, man, as far as like this trip here? Is this evidence of them trying to up their game in order for them to compete with that upcoming Wave Academy? Or, or what do you think about that? I think I believe so because I know in the past, um, when my club, oh, my club uh, we were invited to the San Marino Cup. I don't know if you've ever heard of the cup. It's a youth, mm-hmm. it's a youth tournament with a lot of the youth academy teams from Serie A. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem was it was like four thousand dollars per player to go, and we didn't have the money to travel. But I can see the kids from here, from the whoever is part of the Juventus Academy here, competing in those those tournaments, and then maybe any other ones too. In which I see like a lot, I see a lot of the YouTube of La Liga, League One. They have all their youth academy teams playing in not only domestic tournaments but also little kind of little mini uh, Champions League mm-hmm. tournaments. But it's a good experience for the SAFC and Pro Academies. You know, you get exposure by some of those academy teams. Who's the same one of them? You know, Stoke or Leicester. Hey, you know what? I like this kid. Let's keep an eye on him and maybe buy him off SAFC. And he's now being developed, you know, in the EPL. Makes his way up, which is a great opportunity for all those kids. Here's my question for you, Rafa. Austin FC's... Well, they already started their team. I think U12 is, is what they're they're doing the the SAFC path of, of starting each year, and you know they may add a team or two, you know, for one there. How big, like, how big of a concern of that should should that be for SAFC? Um. Well, it's it gonna be MLS. It is a you know, MLS, MLS academy. But Austin FC also has competition. I don't even know Barcelona has an academy there mm-hmm. in Austin. So the kids may say, you know, we're either play for Barcelona Academy or MLS Academy. You know, they're going to have to make a decision on that. And a lot of the kids are going to go with the brand name. Mm-hmm. Right now, Austin FC, you know, maybe there will be some kids that get on there, try to see the, uh, how it works for them. You know, it's going to take them a while to build up, kind of similar with San Antonio FC. I mean, they've built up their academy, and mm-hmm. which, you know, you got to give Nick Evans mm-hmm. credit. Huge for credit. Like, job. You know, and even Darren Powell, I, I know we're going to talk about him later. One of his strongest points, and, and part of the reason why he was hired, I think, is his his is his background in, in developing of youth. Sure. Um, you know, for that, but between him and I think it was Nick Wright, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you know, uh, that's probably, the, in my opinion, probably one of the strongest parts of SAFC is that academy that that they have. Um, my only concern is, you know. Because you get the, you know, you know, let's say New Braunfels, you know, you know, the, the talent in between, they're now going to have a choice to where right now it's, hey, we only, we're going to go to SAFC or, you know, because, it, you know, they are a DA academy. I'm not sure if the Barcelona or, or if the other academies are uh, DA yeah. academies, if that matters to, you know, you know, you know, to the parent or to the kid, but that's that, my concern. Yeah. And eventually a lot of those end up becoming DA academies. Mm-hmm. Because they have, you know, I know like other like Club America when I was with them, 
you know, they're a DA Academy in Las Vegas, Chicago, Dallas, you know, you know same thing with Real Madrid. They got their DA Academies popping up. A lot of, a lot of the Liga MX teams are moving over here to start up those DA Academies. So you have a lot of competition. So Austin FC, I'm going to say, it's going to take them a while. You know, I'm sure they'll probably get a lot of the kids from Austin, maybe close to the Broncos area. But I think right now, San Antonio FC is in a better position as far as mm-hmm. developing players because they're not proven yet as far as enough to see right. what kind of staff. But if I, I'm, I'm San Antonio FC, going to these tournament overseas tournaments, I start building partnerships with these, you know, EPL clubs. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you know, what can you do to help build our club, help us build our players and so forth? And that way you would say, hey, look, you come play with us. You have an opportunity to maybe even play in the EPL and, and develop there. And that's the thing that, you know, uh, Phoenix is doing is they're getting partnerships around where you don't see that as of, you know, I don't even think they're affiliated with NYC anymore because you don't, sure, I haven't heard that. of anything, good anything on there. Is, that's a good point. Who are they really, you know, are they affiliated with, with anybody at this point? So... Well, and they just had some people over and stuff like that from the Global Footy Pro. So I feel like, to mm-hmm. Rafa's point, they are starting to kind of build some of those pipelines and everything else. But just to get back to the DA Academy talk, you know, with the money that they're sinking in there for the Weventus Academy, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, what, that was like a $5 million, $6 million facility. There's some money behind it that's going into that thing. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of how that changes with Austin FC as well, you know, and some of the kids making it up there. Uh, San Antonio FC is going to have to continue to innovate in order to stay at the top of the game when it comes to their academy program. And, and to both y'all's point, like Nick Evans and Coach Powell have done, they got to. But keep this it up. is the one thing that, in, in like I said, I'm going to give U.S. Soccer some credit, or, or at least the teams, you know, because what Clint Dempsey mm-hmm. back in the day had to go all the way what from Nagadoches all the way mm-hmm. up to FC Dallas to Dallas, to have, Texas, to have an academy. Yep. Now you've got RGV, you've got San Antonio FC, you've gonna, you're going to have Austin FC, um, you know, you got the Dynamo, you got FC Dallas, um, and then, you know, some of the other ones, you know, you know more foreign-based on there. So, you know, when you're talking about the growth, and, and I know we were just talking a lot about, you know, you know the, the UPSL and, and that type of level of, of teams here, well, in five, ten years, when, when these kids start to get to that age, and, and, and some of them are already getting there, you're going to see the, the talent rise in this area, and especially in the state of Texas, which um, I, I saw some, you know, somebody posted on Twitter, you know, best states for soccer coming up. And I think historically, it used to be California and Florida um, through there, and Texas is finally starting to crack into that top three. I know you see that a lot in football, you know, with, uh, you know, the American football with, uh, you know, California, Texas, Florida, you're starting to see that with soccer as well, where, um, you know, you don't have to travel five, six, seven, eight hours, you know, to, to find a decent academy. Um, you know, you know, you're, you're going to be able to, you know, hopefully have one more regionalized um, for that, you know, for that here, which can only, which can only be, you know, better for, you know, my kids' ages and, and, and future generations going forward. I, I like to see them since we're so close to you know, some of the proximity with Liga MX, mm-hmm. having a partnership with that with one of the teams, you know, with some, like Santos, we bring Santos, Monterey, Tigres, you know, even with Club America, you build a partnership with them, even their talent, ex, you know, change players and so forth. You know, you're just going to help build up your, your team. And that's still able to, even though Austin FC is getting their MLS team, you're able to build some of that, you know, who's to say the Austin experience doesn't make it and within mm-hmm. two, three years they're full. Mm-hmm. Guess what? We have a partnership with somebody, you know, they, they can pass the torch to us take it from there. And even, like I said, going to the FTSE all the way to England, you know, having a relationship with like with Stoke or Leicester City and the Wolves, they may not be the top tier names, but they produce players. Mm-hmm produce players that the, the big clubs end up buying. So that's what I think San Antonio FC needs to start looking towards is building the relationships with these clubs and partnerships to help send players down there, but also bring players up here to, you know, to help out, you know, even with the first team. But the thing is, it's a win-win for everybody. 
So you talk about building relationships. Um, I put a put a, a tweet out there, uh, you know, saying, "Hey, should we bring in Austin? You know, hey, bring in uh, Austin Billow or uh, uh, Union Berlin because they each got promoted to their top levels." And uh, somebody responded back, "Hey, I would just be happy if they'd get off the bus." <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, well, and we talk for the about first time in the San Antonio FC RGV history one team was really outclassed and unfortunately we were on the short end of that uh we lost three to one uh in our gv on saturday and should have been worse than that in, in my opinion um you know to, to me it's uh, you know started out uh, just you know for the goals here uh the 21st minute uh, green actually saved a uh, a, a, a goal uh cardoni you know bounced around off cardoni and, and a defender uh, went out to an RGV player who who chipped it over and, and Green hustled back on that and I you know uh, kicked you know kicked it over for for a corner. Um, and around the 33rd minute, um, Enriquez uh, scored. To me, it was the first of the lazy plays. <laughs> I hate to say it, but uh, Green went to cut off the guy that uh, assisted on it. So he basically jogged to the baseline. Um, Enriquez was probably a good three, four, five yards away from any San Antonio defenders. La Hood and Yarrow were the closest. And, you know, you know, you could argue maybe Cardonis could have done something with it, but it was a free shot on him. I put it more on the defense. Uh, the second goal, uh, Ling was playing more off sides, got burnt, just really bad to look at. Salazar got the first of his brace. Uh, in the 36 minutes, and basically he was one on one, and then you know, so you went it down 2-0. Uh, reading social media at that time, uh, fan base was not happy. That's when um, Rafa was breaking <laughs> his phone. Was it right about that time, Rafa? Yeah, that's when he started on the phone right there. <laughs> when you have Aaron and Kyle tweeting not positive things, yeah. you know it's a bad night. Yeah, because um, they're they, they typically kind of keep pretty even, pretty level. You know, a little bit more on the hey glass half full side. Yeah, um, you know for that here, uh, and then the fifty six minutes. Uh, basically, it was on a counter play. Uh, Salazar got the goal. Uh, what what struck me is that RGV beat uh, beat beat San Antonio down. There was only two defenders back there for the majority of the time, and you know, I don't, you know, you can maybe fault Cardoni on the first goal. I really don't. I, you know, and I know somebody, you know, posted on there, hey, is Cardoni the issue? And I'm like, you know, you know, because he doesn't yell, he doesn't set up. And I'm like, Cardoni's not the issue. You know, you know, yeah, you know, you put Restrepo back there, you put Ford back there, you know, who both, you know, communicated, in my opinion, better than Cardoni. It wouldn't have stopped with what was happening in front of him. You know, is basically, yeah, it, it, you know, what what upset me and, and the reason why I uh, submitted the tweet to uh, Tim Holt is around the 30th minute before that second, you know, before that second goal here, you know, between the first and second goal here, the announcers were saying RG Boo is faster, they were stronger. Even at that point, you could just see that it was a different class on the field and when you got neutral announcers because these aren't rgv announcers these are you know guys in tampa calling the game for uh for usl you know you know calling out safc you know one, one of the other lines is, is they don't make any vertical runs and i was like well what's vertical runs and i guess that's up the middle you know they just go up the sides and you know pray to cross it in and but there's no there's no vertical runs, and when they had one is when Guzman sh is when and when Guzman scored is you know they went up the middle on there. So, in my uh, it was it was a shit show. I hate to say it, but it was one of the that you know you know you know we're, we're now Tacoma level on the road. Well, and still with zero points and. We were saying Probably before the match uh, <laughs> that, you know, this might be the first game that we actually get some points on the road. And it definitely wasn't the result that I think anybody was expecting. Um, you know, I, I think you hope 
as we've said before, your keeper can come up big. Uh, you know, you hope Cardoni can come up big on that first goal and make the save. That's what good goalies do. You can't fault him for the goal, but good goalies come up big and make saves like that. Uh, but, you know, it's that was one shot of 100 that evening. And even before, you know, Kai Green had that clearance there mm-hmm. that they almost scored on, you felt like even the first 15 minutes of that game, it's like, oh, no, when are we going to give one up, kind of. And so – I think real early on, fans started to get a sense of unease in that one, watching you know, on TV or on ESPN+. Plus. It wasn't just the announcers that could see we were outmatched pretty early on. This is, this is like no effort, I think, that's out there. They basically, I think, quit. I don't know if they could just quit on the coach or just, just, just running through the motions. You know, watching the, you know, kind of the, last, the, the first two goals, those mistakes shouldn't be happening. Uh, this, they got to get there to the ball a lot faster. You know, you can't put much of the blame on Cardoni. You know, maybe, you know, he was in the right position. Is just like, or dangle it right really good at the shot. You know? couldn't see it maybe. It's, yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, the, and the, I guess to the, coaching wise, you know, you start seeing stuff like that, you know, you got to make a splash. You got to make a statement. You're not gonna play for hard for me. Hey, put some players in there. They're hungry enough to. But they don't have any players. That's the problem. That, and that's and that's where where we we're gonna, that was my next thing is we don't have players. We don't have depth. You know, we don't have the players that we can put in. They're hungry enough to to make a difference. At least if we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose fighting. You know, right? Close. Not not get blown out, especially on a classico like that. You know, you have to bring your. You know. It's about pride. You know, that game is about pride. You know, and there was just no pride shown in that in that game. So what struck me is if you go back to the second half against uh, Real Monarchs, we gave up three there. We gave up three to New Mexico. Could have been more, but they, they pulled the horses off. We gave up three to RGV. So we're... On the road, we gave up basically nine goals before we score. You know, scored the you know, you know mercy goal, and, and you know not to say it was mercy because it was a great, it was a great shot. shot. He had yeah. a great play, but RGV was just setting back at that point. You know, they're you know if they got the opportunity to to go, they went, and if not, they're like they they weren't scared about San Antonio. They 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 had our game plan down. They didn't you know it, you know like hey, we know what you're gonna do. You can do it. That's Bend you know, but don't break kind of mentality and yeah, we end up getting one in the back even, of the net. They weren't even pressured. You right. know, usually when you're down two, three goals, you know, they're putting some pressure on it. And you know, outside of the outside of the Guzman shot that, you know, it was a great individual effort on his part. Mm-hmm. But as far as like a team goal, there wasn't there wasn't there wasn't that fear of, hey, it's building. They're they're building towards something. There there wasn't there wasn't that even even when they were down to you know two nothing at uh, you know at the half it just well but I think you said yeah. it Rafa you said effort and and Harry I know you were talking before the show we were looking at just you know some of those statistics that are just effort statistics and one of them was tackling percentage and uh, you said San Antonio FC's tackling percentage for the evening was twenty twenty eight point six. 28 point and that that just shows a lack of effort you know and and i think that's first and foremost one of the biggest issues that we've seen consistently you know you heard uh fans complaining about lack of effort uh and some of the other matches as well where it kind of looked like we had just kind of hung our heads and given up uh we saw it with tier pack last season i mean even Mm -hmm. going back into the past uh, you know, Rafa, I think you kind of started to mission it, but as far as lack of effort and playing for a coach goes, uh, is, is that kind of what you think we're starting to see out there from San Antonio FC? Yeah, I'm starting to starting to see that. I mean, if you're, you know, being a former player, you know, if you just don't like the coach, you're not going to put the effort in. You know, you're just going to go, I'm still getting paid for this, but I'm just not going to put my effort. I'll get signed somewhere else so they get released. And I think he needs to, I think, realize that and kind of shake things up, you know, or even go to front offices, hey, you know, bring me some players. Bring me some players that are going to play for me. They're going to shake things up. They're hungry enough so I can say, hey, send a message out to the other group, to their other players that we have signed. Hey, 
you know, you can be replaced. But, you know, for me, it's, I think it's time for that change now before it gets worse. You know, who's to say the next road game, you know, either Wednesday night or Saturday night, we end up getting blown out 5-6-0. You know, when, it, when is enough? You know, it's it also has to do with pride, and I don't think the, the players are playing with any type of pride. You know, you got you're you're wearing your colors. You know, you got to show something out there, and that's something that I know when I played, they have told us all that. When I coach, I'll tell my players, hey, you got to play with pride. I'm sure you're like when you play with your teams. You know, wearing wearing the colors like you mentioned, wearing the colors is a privilege. Mm-hmm. It's not a guarantee. It's a privilege and an honor too. And it's about honoring your team. And if you don't want to honor your team, you know, get somebody else in. And so we'll see what happens, like, especially like on the on the on on Wednesday with mm-hmm. Austin. See mm-hmm. how do they rebound from one classical to the to the new classical? Right. You know, can, can they? You know, are they money enough to say, hey, you know what? Let's get to this to the next round. You know, let's see we can how far we can go on this even though our regular season is not doing so well. I just... I just don't know what they can do. And I know we talk about bringing in Coach Marcina, and and I hate singling people, people out, but to me, the Lang-Forbes combo is not working. It, it, it's not. You know, Lang playing in the back, but all year they've they, they haven't clicked. And, and like I said here, I know uh, Forbes came you know came back from Phoenix and, and it didn't work out over you know, over in Phoenix. And I know we've talked about how you know when he's on, he's probably probably one of the best players in the league. The issue is is when he's not on, you know, he doesn't always give that hundred percent towards defense like coach Powell requires you know he sees that so i you know i wonder with them bringing it bringing him back in and, and they brought him in a little bit later if that's if that's causing more problems than than, than what it's good because he has it hasn't worked offensively um well, but really for him nothing's been working or nothing's been clicking offensively i agree with you that that lang forbes connection's not really clicking like we thought it was going to earlier in the season but you know for the last few matches a lot of fans were complaining where's lang where's lang so it was like he wasn't even in the match and we still couldn't score so i mean i feel like you could kind of pick and choose almost any player other than guzman obviously because somehow he's still at least able to get some finishes in, in the last two and everything, or the match against Laredo and then this one here. But so far, you know, it's how much of it's lacking creativity and how much of it's on the players. And I, I feel like that's where you've got this 50-50 split in the fans right now that you do, is half of them feel like, well, we got the players have to play better. Now, whether or not that's on the coach is up for debate. But then the other half feel like, well, how do we get more creative with the attack? How do we get them making those vertical runs? How do we get Billy involved in the game plan a little bit? Like you see flashes of Pirano and everything. You know, how do we finish that off and, and get a result? Because we can sit there and look at the fact that we're giving up three goals in all these games. But when you're only scoring one or you're not scoring at all, not you're still not going to win. Yeah. You know, so you can blame it on the back four. You can blame it on the defense. But the truth is, is when you're not getting the result up top, it doesn't make any difference. Well, this is a team failure. This isn't one side where you, you can say, hey, it's it's the defense that's given up three, four games consistently. That's not the case because the defense has been, I think, been, pro- been typically outside of the first game, first two games. Right. Um, has probably been the stronger part of the two sides. The issue is... Instead, you know, instead of progressing and making um, improving of things here, they're they're falling backwards. And you know, like I said here, it's the schedule doesn't get easy. That's that's the problem. That's the problem for them. Is is you know they they get you know they get Austin, which is an open cup, and and you know the bold got blown out by New Mexico three to one. You know you know in in you know, in, in Austin. So, um, at bold stadium. So, you know, they got a little bit embarrassed, so they're going to be coming out wanting to, you know, revenge that, um, 
but they play at Sacramento, which we've never won there, uh, to my knowledge here, and I could be wrong on that. Um, but then they come home and play Reno. They go on the road and play Oklahoma City and Fresno. So three of the Knicks four are on the road. And the one at home is a team that has our number, you know, I don't believe outside of the first match where we, I think we beat them, you know, I think it was 4-0 the first match that they came um, to San Antonio, but they've won the next three. So, you know, and I know Reno's a little, not as good as they were last year, but when you look at the stretch here for, you know, for, for June, you know, outside of let's say June 26, which is a Wednesday game against El Paso, there's not a lot of easy wins on there. So, you know, if you're going to be making a change, you know, when do you make that change? Because technically their first bye week, it, you know, is, is you know, between July 3rd and, and July 17th. And we know that, the, you know, historically that they're going to have some sort of summer friendly at that time. But to me, if they're going to make a change, it's got to be soon. If not, you're going to write out the year. I would agree with that. Completely. It's all after the June 9th game or the June 8th game. If things just fall apart Maybe there. One more match. Yeah. I think that's at probably home. at home. And mm-hmm. I, but. I agree with you, Rafa. I mean, to your point, Harry, you've got Wednesday against Austin that very likely, you know, we've already lost one zero. They got embarrassed by New Mexico. I think New Mexico is a much better team than RGV. Uh, but it will be enough for them to want to, you know, have something to prove again. Mm-hmm. And it being against San Antonio FC, obviously, they don't want to give us those three points. And then Sacramento on the road where we haven't done well historically at all. So I think after this week, you could very easily see where we don't have a win either Wednesday or Saturday. And you got to do it sooner rather than later. What's the point? Like you say, you might as well just ride it out. And it's certain, there's got to be a point of no return where you just kind of see it through to the end of the season. I think it depends on, as we talked about, it's going to depend on the effort of the players. Because if they come out flat against Austin, if they come out flat against Sacramento, and they put up another embarrassing number, because, you know, as much as I like Coach Powell and he's done a lot of great things, it's a result-oriented business. And they're not getting the results. So something has to change. And unless you're going to just, you know, Tim Holt's going to say, hey, we're going to, you know, the the you know the, the starting 11 that we got or, you know, eight or nine of the, you know, that's, that's starting, all of a sudden you're going to be riding the bench and we're going to bring in, you know, you know, five, six new players, which I don't see. You know, the only thing you can change, unfortunately, in season is the coach. Yeah. And, you know, you got, you got Marcina, um, who has a lot of history with, with, with some of these players. Um, I wonder if he has a good relationship with, with, you know, and I'm not saying Billy and Coach Powell don't have a bad relationship, but we know Coach Marcina and Billy has worked wherever they've gone together. Um, and, you know, I believe Coach Marcina has a little bit different style than, than Coach Powell. Um, and, you know, from, from my memory of the Scorpions years, it was a little bit more um, attacking in nature uh, uh, for that here. But, you know, even with that, it was kind of hit and miss because one year they would have a decent lineup and then, you know, the next year, you know, it would be watered down. So, um, you know, it's, it's just – to me, it's, it's, it's getting to the point where where – if they didn't pull the trigger today, you know, cause I was all, you know, I was looking yesterday, I was looking today. If they didn't pull the trigger today, I think, I think it'll be depending on what happens next Saturday. Um, I could see come next, next Monday, if they lose uh, against uh, the bold and I don't care what kind of losses, but if they lose against the bold, unless it goes to PKs um, and if they get, if they lose to me, lose, you know, by two or three goals in Sacramento, mm-hmm. I think at that point you're good you're going to have to see, see a change. Cause if not, the f- we think attendance is bad now. Yeah. Wait, wait till, Hey, we're 16th out of, out of 18 teams and no offense to Colorado switchbacks or Tacoma. They're going to be 17 and 18th 
through there, but we're heading closer to them than we are heading up the standings. And that's not going to, you know, that's not going to, you know, I'll still go, you know, like I said here, the season ticket, most of the season ticket members will go. Well, the voices will get louder. You know, you already yeah, see it on social media with, with people just calling for a coaching change. You're going to get fringe social, uh, so, uh, fringe season, fringe season ticket members. They go for the atmosphere, for the beer drinking, stuff like that. They're going to start not going. Yeah, yeah, the seats are already paid for, so they still get to count them. But the atmosphere for the last couple of games has been down. Right. And we both, we all know that the tailgates, you know, has dropped at least by half. And they've been hurt As far as the atmosphere, it'll drop even further if, if something doesn't change. The, the, you know, and I'm not saying Tim Holt and, you know, should cater it to the supporters or, you know, to the fans or anything along those lines. But if you got the fans upset, you got the supporter groups upset, and you're not getting results, at, you got to do you got to do something because Tim Holt said last year was unacceptable, and he said this at the Crocketeers annual meeting. Yeah. And I'm sorry, last year is light years ahead of where they're at right now. Yeah. And I think this is the system they wanted. You know, they talked about guys leaving that we didn't really understand why they were leaving. Guys like Sip, you know, that played really well for San Antonio FC that no longer fit their system. So whatever that system is, they, they've got, you know, everything that they wanted right here at the beginning of the season, and this is the result. I don't think they even have a system, to be, to be honest. You know, I don't know what system they're going to do because he's gone through – Four three 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 four three four one four one. When you start stick going to different formations every every two weeks, every three weeks, you know you don't have a system. You're just being you're just desperate to see what works, what doesn't work. He's throwing he's throwing shit against the wall. That's what he's doing. And that's and I think Holt should, should also open his eyes on that and say, hey, you know, like I said, that's last year was not. You know, which is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. You know, something. I think some of the signings we've made. You know, like especially like the three younger players that they signed. I think that was more for show to bring in tickets. You know, I rather use those three spots for three veteran players that are going to make a difference. But those are cheap players. That's the problem. And, and that's and to and me that's that, what we talked about last week with Scott is. Yeah, it's a great story from the San Antonio side. But when you're looking at it from a roster building, when you're talking, you know, looking at it as a USL indie team, I don't see a lot of USL indie teams having three that they depend. And I know Brian's a little bit different because sure, he yeah. had that history. He's still on academy. Uh, Gallegos is is he's done okay, but to me, when they're when they're your main subs, that's that's coming yeah. on. That's a problem. And, and, and my issue is, why are we playing laying in the back? Because we Mo got Fenwick out. and we got Ibusi, mm-hmm. who are defenders. And I understand, Mo, you know. I think they were trying to recreate is. that kind of Moses Hernandez role, and they were looking for more somebody like that than a Fenwick that can't really control the ball and bring the ball up out of the back like a guy like Mo or Lance can. Right or wrong, I'm just saying. I, I think that's what they were going for. Was more of a. I mean, no, if you're gonna put Lance in the field, you want to put Lance on the field. Play a three-four-three. True. So don't have him as a defender. Right. He's not a defender. No, that's 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 a very good point. And they weren't you playing. You think a defender's gonna go up and attack, but doesn't know how to defend? You know, you're just kidding yourself. So if you're gonna put him in, play it, play in the three-four-three, have him outside on a wing, whether with Billy or opposite Billy. Right. That'd probably be more ideal for him to play it. That's a great point. Or you're gonna play four three three, have him up up front, you know, or even as an attacking mid with Pirano, you know, let, you know something like that, and just have Lud play the defense of holding mid. But they had him as more of a left back, a traditional left back, yeah. than playing as a winger. That's, that's a great and that's, point. And that's that's just not dumb. smart soccer there. That's dumb. No. And, and, and I know I ripped on him, and, and you know, like I said, he's a great guy. But it, and it's one of those things that us. Well, I'll use me. I have very limited technical knowledge. You know, I've I've picked up the game in the last ten years. 
you know, nine years, I guess, however long SAFC and, and the Scorpions have been around, you know, I don't have the depth of knowledge that you guys have, but if I'm picking up saying, Hey, this is not his natural position. Mm -hmm. You can surely bet RGV is just licking their chops going, please start him, please start him, him, please start him. Yep. And, I mean, Salazar picked us apart. He got the brace, you know. Uh, they they obviously knew what they were doing and, and picked us apart. But, you know, I, I know we want to continue to talk about this this subject. And, and Harry, I, I think you said it perfectly. I think to put a pencil on the calendar and, and kind of circle that Sunday after the match against Sacramento – is hopefully what FO and, and, you know, what everybody's doing right now is as far as that goes. And I would hope that if, if Powell wasn't head coach for San Antonio FC, he still would have a part in the academy program as, as mm-hmm. you know, some sort of director or whatever there. But I, I do think it's it's time for a change. So let me ask you this question, because he's what, technical director as well, right? Do you think – it's ever crossed his mind to kind of say, to step back and say, hey, it's it's not working here. Let me continue the role as the GM, the technical director. Or do you think it's one of those, it's that position's all, Part you know, one and the same. And the reason why I ask is sometimes in football, they have it split. And then he'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have that divide. In soccer, is, is that really the technical director and the coach is kind of one and the same? Or is it like American football where, it really should be two separate roles, uh, you know, along those lines. It's two separate roles. I know uh, when I met with the Club America staff, uh, the, the first E was not even involved with the academy. They had their own technical director, which was, I remember at the time was Guillermo Naranjo. He said that he had like, no contact with, with the upper, upper people because, like I said, he was dealing with kids. Like you use 16 and, and under, you use 17 and under. You know, the only time maybe they move up and hit that one kid was like blowing everything up. Okay, you know what? Maybe we need to put him in the first, you know, in the, fir- in the first team or one of the reserve teams, like right below from the first team. So and I think those two jobs are separate. Well, I don't know if he's doing both, which is, I think, I think he is probably doing both. Mm-hmm. You know, but maybe he does need to step aside. On top and just stick to doing the technical stuff with the youth because that's been a success. Well, not even the technical on the youth. I think because I think pro team. on the pros because Nick's the the pro academy director and assistant coach. Right. Um, I think Darren Powell is more the uh, technical director and head coach. You know, for, for the first team. looking at the front office. And I guess, you know, it says Tim Holt, you know, SAFC managing director and, you know, VP, you know, for SSME. So is is Holt more the more, more the one calling the shots on the players or is it more Coach Powell? I think that's probably a combination of both, right, Rafa? Both. I mean, that's going to de- depend on the relationship. Is it Powell asking for these guys and Holt? You know, obviously he probably has the final say-so in, in the budget, who they bring in, who they don't what the money they can offer that guy looks like and everything. But I feel like this team, these players would be more pals players that he wanted. And that's why you saw certain guys leave and then certain guys stay. And and that's kind of that system. I think when they're referring to, you know, I didn't meet our system or this is the system that we want. It's more around personnel than any kind of formation or or anything like that. It's more a a strategy, but I, I don't feel like, Powell would be able to just step down from like a head coach and stay on as a technical director. I, I, I just, I think that would undermine Marcina or whoever you put in. It wouldn't really be fair to that new head coach. And I don't think it'd really be fair to coach Powell either. I, I think that if it would, if, if it does happen, it'll come out as some type of have agreed to come to a mutual decision. He's stepping down as head coach will stay on as whatever position they want to create for the academy, if that's what they want to offer him. Obviously, he's done a great job for soccer here in San Antonio and kind of getting SS&E or San Antonio FC from the Scorpions to the team that they are now. So it's it's you've seen loyalty to Coach Powell, I guess, is the point that I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. I think you would still see that loyalty offered if it was for him to step down as head coach. But I, I, I think we're it runs in through cycles, you know. 
we peak and now we're I, I think maybe it's it is time for a change you know try something new if it works great if it doesn't you know it's it's going to be the, it's pretty much with any protein you know, you know who, whoever you bring in it's it's the roll of the dice yeah and the unknown's always a little bit scarier than the known, right? Whether it's one of us, you know, applying for that next promotion or, or whatever, you know, the, the known, at least you kind of know what you have. But mm-hmm. I, I know we're kind of coming up on, on that a little over an hour mark now. Um, we got the upcoming uh, Open Cup match versus Austin that we've kind of touched on, some of the, the ramifications of uh, Rafa, Harry. I, I know you guys are going to be able to make the trip up there for that. So let's uh, let's try and wrap it up with just kind of our final thoughts. If it's maybe on the uh, open cup match or, or just whatever you guys want to touch on, uh, do you want to kick us off there first, Harry? Yeah. So the open cup here, uh, I'm kind of interested to see how both teams uh, come out. Um, you know, it's just with it being a Wednesday night. I don't think there'll be a, a crowd there, unlike the first game. Um, where it was a sellout, I think, uh, uh, just with some of the social media interaction, um, you know, our, our old uh, friend, uh, Sonny Guadalajara, um, has been trying to get some of the Anthem, uh, Austin Anthem, who, you know, the, the supporters group for Austin FC to come out and support. And they're getting quite, he's getting quite a bit of a kickback for that. So I don't, you know, unlike the first game where, you know, it was, you know, it was a packed house, I don't see it being a packed house. Um, before they're here, I'm interested to see how many SAFC fans travel up. Um, I don't think it'll be as many as 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 uh, anticipated. Um, I'm going up, but uh, obviously with it being a school night and um, coming back, you know, 45 minutes an hour, I guess 90 minutes, uh, two hours to from you know, from Bold Stadium. Uh, Monica didn't like having the kids out, <laughs> so. Uh, they will be staying home. Plus, twenty bucks a ticket was a was a, a little bit of a sour taste uh, for it. But uh, I know I'm going to be there. So, <sighs> when, when you support a club, um, I was thinking about this. You're going to find out who the true supporters of the team are, um, and, and you see it with Spurs and, and you know you know NFL. I think is a little bit exempt on it unless there's a, a long haul. You're going to see who the actual true fans are because, you know, if things don't change, and even right now, you, you, you know, you hear a lot of people that are saying, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, you know I'm going to do something else as opposed to going out there just because, you know, the atmosphere, the, the performance isn't, isn't very good. So um, the players outside of this game uh, typically have gave 110% uh, generally for most of them. Um, I know the game against RGV, it just, you know, you know, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, please come out and support the team. You know, like I said here, you know, I was looking at the, you know, uh, you know, there, there's a, a post on Reddit and social media um, about USL attendance. Uh, SAFC's dropped to 10. So, you know, if we don't keep, if, if we don't keep showing up or if it keeps dropping, I think for the first time, San Antonio will be out of the top 10 as far as, you know, attendance in division two, which is something that we've always held our hat on saying, you know, Hey, you know, we support our team. You know, we crack on Austin, we crack on, uh, RGV. Well, it's time to, to show up and, and, and back what you've been saying, uh, and, you know, and show, you know, if you are, especially if you've already paid for the tickets, go out. It doesn't cost you anything except for a couple of beers or a soda. And they did do a, a good job adjusting ticket prices. I mean, that's kind of what sucks there for San Antonio FC this season is you feel like the product off the pitch has gotten, you know, so much better with the family-friendly concession prices, mm-hmm. the refillable cups with free sodas for season ticket members. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see kind of if they do any season ticket member events here in the next, you know, eight weeks or whatever, like you talked about with the buy and everything. Um, I don't remember historically. Well, hell, a watch party would be nice by anybody. Or a watch party even. Yeah, exactly. This they... goes out to Mission City, Crocketeers, 210, SAFC. Where the fuck are the watch parties? They're not. I know it's, I know Mission City's had one, and I think the Crocketeers have had one. Mm-hmm. And they were on the same night. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and that's just kind of my final thoughts. You know, I, I'm on board with you there, Harry. Um, you know, go out there and continue to support regardless of the results on the field. You know, we'll continue to root the team on and, and do your part in everything. Um, hopefully, you know, something changes. Uh, but other than that, all you can do is go out there still and support. And then also, too, uh, definitely the, the June 1st match for the Athenians. Um, Alamo City looks to be like it's going to be a pretty awesome experience out there. I'm excited to go check out the uh, stadium that they have out there for the girls. And like you mentioned, with the food trucks and the, and the booze trucks and everything else, uh, go out there and check out one of these games uh, on a Saturday or something like that when San Antonio FC is not in town. But Rafa, again, thanks for joining us, man. What about you, buddy? Any final thoughts? Uh, I know you didn't get to join us after y'all's tournament win uh, last week. Yeah, that that was a that was a barn burner. Right? <laughs> last game. You know, we made... Go ahead. Oh, I have one more thing here for you. Uh, this got... Go ahead, Rafa. Yeah, yeah. That last game, you know, we were a little made some adjustments. You know, I, I kind of called out my players on the first time we played. We didn't play with any effort. We were just made too many bonehead mistakes, and then uh, we actually scored a goal in 25 seconds. And oh we, wow. Yeah, we were up 3 nothing at the half. It's like, all right, I know we're playing Liverpool. We're not going to beat Barcelona, give up four goals in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we poured it on. Actually, the referee actually stopped the game with five minutes left. You know, we kind of did the mercy rule. I mean, we were just pouring it on. And, that, I mean, I can't be more proud of the boys. I mean, they, they that was probably one of the best games we've played. You know, playing against a team that's U19, it was, it's a year up, too. So that's I got a lot of a lot of good comments from a lot of the coaches that did watch the game and stuff. So that's that's pretty good. But as far as like Wednesday's game, I'm hoping we put, we get the win. You know, I think hopefully they learn something from a, you know from the Saturday's game. Say so, you know what, let's come out, let's win this one for the fans. You know, what do we have to lose now? You know, let's let's win one for this, go all out. If we're gonna go out losing. We're gonna go out with a fight, not with a whimper. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to make a statement to Austin and get a win and get knock them off the cup. And where we play next, all right, let's, let's take we'll probably be an MLS team either uh, either uh, Dallas or Houston. So, and that'd be great. I mean, hopefully, one of those two teams come over here, and maybe that would excite the fans. You know, the fans have got to understand. You know, we go through peaks and valleys in soccer, but you know, just got to be out there for the love of the sport. You know, whether you win or lose, you know, it's got to be motivated for, for your team. So hopefully, like I said, we got a good, you know, this will do good turnout for Wednesday night. So hopefully people, the true fans go out there and support the guys and hopefully we can get a win Wednesday night. So, and my last thing here, Scott, uh, you know, has to do with uh, Diego Restrepo. Uh, he is bringing Gully Wars back to San Antonio. I've been to a couple of these here. Um, my son asked me asked me about, hey, when's the next goalie war? So, um, you know, it, you know, I know Diego does a lot for Austin, and he's, you know, obviously he's done a lot for us. But June sixteenth um, at seven two nine nine Lusky Boulevard, uh, San Antonio, uh, one p.m. ages nine and above. Uh, I think it's what sixty five dollars to register here, and of course there's prizes for winners. Um, but you can go on to uh, soccergkpro.com. Uh, get information on that here. So, you know, like I said here, um, you know, the, 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 you know, to me that's something that, you know, I, I try to promote for Diego and um, I know he's, you know, up the road a little bit, but, uh, you know, he's still giving back to, you know, San Antonio and, uh, you know, if, if you are interested or as a goalie here, uh, that was a pretty fun event uh, to attend to the two times I've been. Absolutely. Well, we'll see what happens uh, here on Saturday and Wednesday uh, and see what happens next week. You know, we may be having a whole other conversation on Monday saying we told you so or maybe something else entirely. So only time will tell. But that's our thoughts here on the San Antonio Soccer Roundtable. We out.